قد أفلح المؤمنون. Correct. And now we'll go over my number one pick. Who is my number one favorite companion of Aba Abdullah al Hussein? And like I said, no one guessed who it is. No one knows who who my number one pick is. And I'll tell you who it is. My number one pick is a woman. They were saying, say the Zainab. No, it's not say the Zainab. It's not say the Zainab. The lady that I have picked for my number one pick is the Sayyidah Talat. And her story is, is very, very tragic. It's very sad. Because Sayyidah Talat is mentioned only once. Her name is mentioned only once in the primary sources. Just one time. And she was not a knight like Al Hur and Zuhair. She was not the spouse of one of these great companions of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. But as I said, when it comes to Abu Tufayl, as I said, when it comes to Imam al Hassan, we in Mu'minun, we give credit where credit is due. We recognize that any small deed, no matter how small, no matter how seemingly insignificant, it matters to us. It matters to Allah and His Messenger. Correct? And that is why Tawa is, is, is special. That's why she's important. So, what, who is Tawa? What is her story? This is reported in a tabari in volume 19, page 21, as well as page 51, 52, and 54. And in Sab al Ashraf by al Baladri, volume 2, page 338. Tawa al Kufiyya, she was a woman living in Kufa, and she was said to have been an Umm Walad for al Ash'ath ibn Qayyish. She had once been one of his concubines. And so, Tawa is the woman, fa- she's famous for one thing. What's that one thing she's famous for? Is she's the woman who took in Muslim ibn Aqeel. And so, Al-Kufa, as we know, is the city of Amir al-Mu'minin. It was his capital. It was his city. He moved the capital of the Islamic civilization here. And from there, we get our grammar, we get our Quran, we get our tafsir, we get our hadith. Correct? And it owes it all to Amir al-Mu'mineen, salam Allah It owes it all to the likes of Salman al-Farisi and Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. And of course, Amir al-Mu'mineen. And later, the, the disciples of al-Muhammad, they would, the Kufa was their headquarters. It was their home. This is, this is the place where, you know, Muawiyah, Allah once said, he said, Ya Ahlul Kufa, the one thing that amazes me more, about, uh, more than your loyalty for Ali during his life, is your loyalty to him after his death. No matter what I do to you, I cannot tear that love of Ali out of your hearts. But Kufa's darkest hour may have been at this point. Is that Muslim ibn Aqeel had come to Kufa as Imam al Hussein's messenger, and thousands of people have given him bay'ah, and they had reassured him that they would fight for Abu Abdullah al Hussein. But through his cunning, through his deception, through bribery and manipula- manipulation and intimidation, Ibn Ziyad had turned Kufa against him. And so the nephew of Ali عليه, was wandering through the streets of Kufa all alone. And we describe the Ghurba of Muslim ibn Aqeel and we describe the Ghurba of Imam al Hussein. It's one thing to be alone out in the desert all by yourself. That, that is lonely. But even more lonely, even more terrifying is to be surrounded by enemies without a single friend in sight. And you don't know where to go. You don't know who to turn to. And so in this moment, when the entire city of Kufa had basically been, been silenced, the entire city of Kufa had been turned into hostile territory, one woman stood up for Muslim ibn Aqeel. One woman dared to take him in and to give him shelter and to reassure him that it wasn't the end of the world. And that was to say the Tawah. The, the reports tell us that Muslim ibn Aqeel, inshallah, we'll cover this more if we do the bio of, of Muslim ibn Aqeel and his entire story of, of how he ended up in this situation. He came to her door and she noticed him there. She noticed him standing outside of her house. So she, she asked him, what are you doing here? And he asked her, he said, lady, could you please give me some water? So she gave him a bowl of water and he drank from the water. Correct. And so then she asked him, she said, young man, who are you? Why are you here? It is very inappropriate for you to be standing here. Don't you have a tribe to go to? I've given you water. What more do you want from me? And so Muslim ibn Abid said to Tawha, he says, I have no home to go to. I have no tribe. I have no family to go to. 
I am a stranger on this land. I said, who are you? He said, I am Muslim ibn Aqil ibn Abi Talib. I'm the nephew of Amir al muminin And I'm the messenger, the cousin of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. And so she took him into his home. And she took him into her home. Correct? And we, many of us have heard the story. He stayed in her home and she did her best to conceal him that night. But she had a son, her son Bilal came and he noticed that she kept going into this room and she kept coming out. So he asked her who's in there and she swore him to secrecy, but then she told him that it was Muslim ibn Aqil. So her son went and he informed the agents, the agents of Ibn Ziyad about Muslims hideout. And so Ibn Ziyad then sent Muhammad ibn al-Ash'ath with 70 other men to arrest Muslim and take him to the palace. So someone asked the question, he says, well, Saif, how could you Praise this woman if at the end of the day she failed. If at the end of the day, Muslim ibn Aqil was killed. Correct? We say she tried. And that's the perfect way to conclude the saga of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. If you are a person who looks at things from a dunyawi perspective, you said Hussein was killed, his companions were killed. Correct? What victory is that? We say no. Al Hussein and his men attained something unattainable, we would say. They reached a status that no one else can reach. And that is immortality. Not immortality in the sense that they will live forever. That only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the closest thing to that is to become one of the awliya of Allah, is to attain martyrdom fi sabilillah. And so this lady, this poor woman, Tawqa, what she offered Muslim ibn Aqil that night, that simple act of support, that simple bowl of water, correct? That place where he felt safe, that reassurance that it's not the end of the world, that reassurance that yes, there is someone within these houses, within this city that still supports you, correct? That means the world to the Ahlul Bayt. That's all they want from us, correct? And so even though she may not have been at Karbala, and we don't know what happened to her, what her ultimate fate is, the sources don't tell us what ended up happened to her. Only Allah knows what must have been going through her head when the news of Zainab and the women of Bani Hashim being taken prisoner, being taken captive in Kufa, how she would have reacted to that. Only Allah knows. But one thing is for certain, Allah does not for, for neglect the reward of someone who tries. Allah does not neglect those believers who do their best. Even if the entire world is against you, even if the entire world has betrayed you, never take your faith away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never stop doing the right thing. And so with that being said, we will conclude inshallah. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, Karbala is what, you know, when, when Imam, the story of Imam al-Hussein said, Allah, and we cover his story in more depth soon, as soon as we can, inshallah. But when it comes to the saga of Karbala, the story of, of Karbala. The Karbala is where men became heroes. Where these men who history would otherwise not know a thing about, this is where they became heroes. And this is where those heroes like Al Hussein and Al Abbas and Zainab, this is where they became martyrs. This is where they attained that status. Correct? So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, we only did this because we wanted to educate people. We saw that perhaps the companions of Abba Abdullah were, were neglected to a degree, that we needed to dedicate time to their biography specifically. So we did our best, and we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept this from us. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and to bless you and to bless the followers of Muhammad wa Muhammad and to grant us the honor of ziyarah of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. And with that, we will conclude with Surah Al Fatiha.